but if it's a bank fee transaction, then it might include data that will have the vendor in it, making it easy for us to record this. So if I was to record this into the bank feeds and then add the class tracking and, and the projects and all the other stuff, let's see where it is located. Now, if I go to the first categorized field, it doesn't look like an expense type form, but it basically is an expense type form. We also could match it. We could have a transfer, but usually if it's gonna be a decrease, it's gonna to go to this category. And although it doesn't look like an expense type form, that's basically what we're using here. I can then say from the memo, I'm gonna say this is gonna make a new vendor, which I'm gonna call vendor five from the memo, saving it. Then we're gonna record it to our expense category transaction. So let's say it was for utilities or whatever. And then uh, the customer field, this is where we would assign either, this is where we would assign either the project or the sub customer. So the sub customers you can see are indicated by the indentations of the numbers and the projects I set up as projects. So let's pick a project here and then we could make it billable. So we have that billable setting, which allows us to pull it into the invoice uh, if we so choose, just to remind us where that billable setting is. If I right click and duplicate the tab, it's in the settings up top and then it's in the accounting and settings under the expenses tab. And then I said billable items and we have the billable items turned on here. So now we have that showing up in our bank feeds as well, which is nice. I'm gonna say done and let's close that back out. All right, and so then we have the location tracking, which shows up here. So I can pick a location for the entire transaction, similar to with the expense form. I've got the class tracking, so I can say business subclass one, let's say, and I have the tags. So tags show up in a similar kind of area. And then that's the general feel of it. Now you might be saying, hey, wait a second. What if I need to record multiple categories of the transaction? Let's open this up again. I'm gonna duplicate and compare this to like an expense form here. And I go up top and go new. This is basically like an expense form that's coming in through the bank feeds. And if I was to mirror this, it would look like this. I did, what did I do? Vendor five, checking account. Uh, and then I said location was here. And then I said uh, the category was utilities, utilities. And then let's just say, I'll just put an amount in this one. And then I said it was billable. And then I used the sub customer of project and I assigned it to a class. But what if I had two different classes I needed to assign it out to? So maybe I had utilities account here and this was for 500 or whatever and I needed to assign it possibly to a different project, even maybe, and to a different class. And this one's gonna go to B2. So, so now I've got these two line items here. How do I do that over here? Well, then I've gotta to go to the split. I can go to the split item here and I can say now I've got vendor California and here's my utilities and I can go to utilities again utilities and I can assign it to uh, a different class. I had this in class one and class two and I could assign it to a different customer or sub customer and I could make it billable. And this is gonna be, let's say 20 and 10. So that splits out between the two in like a similar fashion. So let's go ahead and uh apply and accept and so there we have that if i go into my reports then and run it i'm into my balance sheet now and i go into my checking account we're gonna say all right did it record the transaction uh the 30 dollars vendor five there it is now if i go into this form it shows me the expense form right which is looking like the form that I that I was building over here to kind of mirror it. So we've got the utilities, the utilities, there's your class tracking, your project, your, uh, your classes, your projects, your location, and your tags. I didn't add a, a, a tag again, but there's your tags. So 
Save and close. So now you can do all the sorting of it. If we check this out, if I go uh, exit and I go up top and I say I can sort it now by locations, boom. And so now I've got California and uh, Nevada, only one location was I able to assign because that's how locations work. But if I go to the classes, then now I've got my my two that I assigned the class out, but it didn't break it out on the balance sheet because re remember the balance sheet is a little bit, a little bit tricky. It's mainly the income statement that works quite well with these tools. And then if I break it out by customer, that's where it breaks out the projects and the jobs. But mainly we want to see that on the profit and loss. Let's go to the P&L, do the same thing. If I go to the P&L, there's our utilities at the bottom. If I break it out by classes, boom. Now you've got it broken out by, by the class, the 10 and the 20, the 20 and the 10. I could see it by locations, do, 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 locations, run it. And so now we have, we put that in the California location. We can see it by uh, customers, which will be the breakout used typically for both the projects and the class tracking. And then remember when you do tags, I'm gonna right click and duplicate again. You often wanna do the tags from the tags field, which you could find in the banking and then go to tags. And then you can run your run your report from the tags. So now I've got my item here. I could run my report and I can take it from 010123 to 123 and run it. And so there you've got your your tag item. So the data input fields are basically there, but they they look a little bit different. Let's do another one. Uh, do you want to leave without saving? I'm gonna say yes. And this one, notice on the sales side, usually we, we would like to enter an invoice or a sales receipt. But remember, when you pull in the bank feeds, the form is typically going to be a deposit form. So you got to think about how that's going to work fit into your, your billing system. Do you want to match the deposit or do you want to enter the deposits as basically income at the point in time they come in from the bank feeds? But on this deposit form, you can see you've got your tag fields up top here. You've got uh, the the classes are here that we can assign a class to and uh the locations are up top so we've got the location and then uh those are going to be the and then re received from this is where you you've got your subclasses and your projects so let's mirror that over here and i could say okay let's say i do a deposit type of item and so so the this would be a received i put v vendor it should be a customer i would think here's a customer one let's do this one and we're going to say this is going to be customer number one or customer two so i'll put that in here there's customer number two uncategorized is going to be some kind of income typically uh that we're going to assign it to unless we're matching it up to an invoice or a sales receipt. So we'll talk more about that on the bank feeds item. But if I'm using the deposits, so we've talked about this in our bank feed course or section, but if you're using deposits to record revenue, then you might put this to like sales. So we'll say sales, uh, sales account, product sales, okay. Here's your location. I'll say Nevada this time, here's your class, but the class once again is only be assigned to the whole thing because we only see one uh, line item, you know, thus far.